So instead of just tweeting and posting shorts about my various multias, I'm actually going to do a project with with one of them. It isn't quite the project that I had originally intended, but sometimes life, you know, takes a takes a different direction. Now, I'm going to mostly work on this multi over here that sort of has its bits hanging out. I was having some difficulties with both machines and multias are notorious for heat issues. So I had it out and they're just out of frame. There's a, a fan that's blowing on it. It turns out the issues that I was having weren't heat related, but I'm going to cover that stuff in a different video. I'm going to do a separate like multi a hardware troubleshooting video because that's going to be its own its own thing. Uh, in this video, I'm going to install Windows NT 4.0 on this multi -a and get it running. And you know, you would think, oh, you're just going to install an operating system. It's no big. It, it was the most excruciatingly painful Windows install I've ever attempted to do. It took so long to figure out how to do it because there's a bunch of little gotchas and little things that if you do them just slightly wrong, you get a, yeah, it punishes you a lot over and over again for every mistake you make. So this is to help the next poor schmuck that comes along and wants to put Windows NT 4.0 on one of these machines. So let's go ahead and uh, see how much fun we can have. <laughs> <laughs> when the system first comes up, it has no firmware settings, just like a PC with no CMOS settings. All of the same kinds of things and more have to be configured before installing Windows NT. There are many opportunities for simple mistakes to result in difficult to diagnose errors, and I'll show some of these along the way. The first step is to set up the system, and the ARC firmware forces you to perform each of these sub-steps in order. First, Set the system date and time. This is one of the many opportunities for an obtuse failure mode. You would hope that the firmware would be Y2K compliant, but it's not. It does pretend to be. Setting the year to 2022 results in the system time still being flagged. Editing the time again, and the correct 2022 date is shown WTF. The other Multia that I have really trolls you hard on this one by suggesting that you can enter a date from 0 to 9,999. Go ahead. I dare you. It has the same failure mode. To make it worse, I've noticed both systems crash after a quote-unquote invalid date has been entered. Well done, digital. Well done. Use an earlier year that has the same date with the same day of the week. 1994 had August 2nd on Tuesday, just like 2022, so I used 1994. Now, set the default environment variables. The most important thing here that you actually choose is the location of the default system partition. This is a bit like the master boot record on a PC hard disk. We'll actually create that partition in a moment. However, the most important thing that gets set here is the SCSI host ID. Until that is set, SCSI will not work at all, which can lead to the most frustrating failure I encountered. More on that in a moment. Failure to create and configure a system partition will result in the Windows NT installation failing. This failure at least tells you how to fix it, but they could have just given you the option to run Arc Inst from here instead of having to reboot yet again. Knowing this step is important, you may be tempted to be clever and do it first. Foolishness! Try running arcinst before the SCSI host idea is set in the previous step, and the arc firmware will tell you that the path is not defined. I even checked my CD in a different computer to make sure I typed everything correctly. SCSI just isn't working yet. This could have been a more useful error message. Derp. ArcInst is the least inspiring disk partition utility I have ever seen. Make a small system partition because it only stores the programs that load the real operating system. It's glorified storage for the bootloader. Making it small also makes it format more quickly.
And now, finally, after all those trials and tribulations, we can start to install Windows NT. For the most part, from here on, this is just like any other installation of Windows NT 4.0, so I'm just going to speed through most of it. I'm not going to do jump cuts because at some point someone may want to refer to this and see every little thing that happened because they're having some other problems that I somehow didn't have. The similarity with other Windows NT 4.0 installations includes the limitation on system partition size. Unfortunately, I forgot about that little detail. Oops. The screen redrawing times on this thing are just excruciating. I can't, I can't believe that it's this slow. Anyway, a two gigabyte partition is absolutely adequate for a regular Windows NT install. I, I don't know what I was thinking before. After the installer is done copying files to the hard disk, it will reboot as usual. However, Arc firmware will complain about boot selections. This can be ignored for now because it will be configured later. Then it's on to the usual thing where the NT installer converts the FAT partition to NTFS. Why can't it just do NTFS in the first place? I seem to recall they fixed that in Windows 2000. Another reboot, and continue ignoring the complaints about boot selections. Then, big surprise, more boring typical Windows NT installation. Ha! <laughs> you can uh, find a Windows NT product key on the internet for yourself. Let the installer search for devices and take all the defaults. It actually does the right thing here for the onboard network adapter. And then more waiting. This whole time, I wish I could have sped up the actual install instead of just the video. It also correctly identifies the onboard video adapter now, I picked 800 by 600 here because the screen updates are already slow enough. I don't need to watch it redraw even more pixels. So I'm just trying to save myself some suffering here. <laughs> One last reboot. Now it's time to take care of this boot selections problem. The NT40 installer tries to create a boot selection that is garbage. Instead of trying to fix it, create a new one. Now, I made a mistake here. I should have edited the OS loader directory. Checking the boot selections tells me that it's wrong. So I edit it to be WinNT40, yo! 
It was completely non-obvious that this change was necessary, and I only discovered this by looking at the hard disk on another computer. I then got confused by the garbage boot selection that the NT installer created, so I deleted them both and started over, but I did it correctly the second time around. And now, finally, it is possible to boot into Windows NT 4.0 on this deck alpha. It's about time for crying out loud. And now Windows gets in on the fun of complaining about the system date. Don't be tempted to be clever and set the real date here. One, because for some reason you can't just type the number in. And two, because the ARC firmware still isn't Y2K compliant and it wants you to be unhappy. And it really, really won't let you boot into NT until you fix the date. That's it for this video. Now that I've got Windows NT 4.0 loaded on the Multia, I can start on some other projects with it. I've got a couple other videos coming out first, but hopefully the first follow-up will be pretty soon. No promises. If you would like to see that video, please subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram using links in the, des in the description. And until next time, try to remember the good stuff.